speaking different languages. The Pentecostal came and was asking, what is happening there? And they said, there's too much, too much noise in this place. The Pentecostal, they, some of them got themselves drunk. They were laughing and eating. And they came, they said, who are these people? It was the Pentecostal that came to ask the believers what were they doing. And Peter asked, he said, he said, they some of them they say, these people are drunk. They didn't say these Pentecostals are drunk. They said, these people are drunk. And, and they, they, Peter, after receiving the Holy Spirit, was bold. And he spoke out. He said, ye men of Judea, men of Jerusalem, this is not drunken as you suppose. He said, but this was what was spoken in the book of uh, uh, Joy. That in the last days, says the Lord, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see vision and the old men shall dream dreams. He said, it has come to pass today. So you see, so he, 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 the, the believer were, were the ones separated from the Pentecost. So we are not Pentecostal. So you see. There's some certain things you, you answer, some name you answer that put limit in your life. You see now? Amen. Amen. So I, I, I'm not a Pentecostal. I am, I am the Holy Catholic. Amen. Amen. The one that is from above. Now, I said all that to say this. You know, when you measure some statement, if you do not explain well, uh, some people will get it wrong, isn't it? Okay, I just explained because I wanted you to know. This is what I mean. In a, in a vibrant Holy Ghost filled church like this, where uh, we gather, we see strange move of God and God doing mighty things, I think it's very important for us to be very careful uh, as in what we do and what we say concerning the church. Are you listening? Because it's a spiritual church. When you are dealing with spiritual things, be careful. Be careful so that you don't go and carry problem. And, 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 and many, they carelessly carry cause and problem without even knowing. Most, most especially when you are dealing with Holy Ghost filled church, where the Spirit of God is at last. Is at last at any time. You call the name of that ministry or the man of God or a brother or a sister, the Holy Spirit responds. They might not be there to respond for themselves, but the Holy Spirit bear their name. So be careful what you say about them. And what you say about the church. Amen. Amen. It's very important. We are full of love. We carry love. We demonstrate love. At the same time, we are careful. How many of you remember the book of uh, Acts chapter 5? Ananias and Sapphira. The Bible said it, it, that was just the early time of the Bible. And, and, and if that thing happened in our time, the pastor will be, go to prison, isn't it? But yet, in that time, it still do happen. And Ananias and Sapphira, the Bible says, as the church were giving, so you see. And Ananias came and said, he said, Peter, we, we, my wife and I, we're going to give our land. We will sell it and bring the money to support the church. And, and, and it's okay. They went out and they went, they sold their land and they conspired within themselves. They said, I can't we just, how can we just give all this money? Let's take some part and, and take this one to the church and we'll keep this one. But they said, we're going to give the seed, the land and sell it and we we'll give the money to the church. The Holy Ghost registered it. Do you understand? Because it was not Peter that you were giving to. It was God. Are you listening now? And look at what happened. And they went back home. They sold the land. They came back with half of the money. And, and this is it. And the man said, sir, this is the money we sold for the land. And Peter said, are you sure? 
And Ananias said, yes, this is the money. He said, why do you choose to lie to the Holy Spirit? The man just said that. And Ananias fell down, turned around and fell down and died on the altar in the church. And Peter appointed some men in the church, some leaders. He said, go and bury him. He didn't consult any government. The church did not attack him. The brethren did not attack him. He said, go and bury that guy. Who? Oh. They went and buried him. Immediately, the those that buried the, the husband were just entry. Sapphira came in. Eh? Sapphira, <laughs> Ananias and Sapphira. Be careful. Sapphira came in and Sapphira, uh, he said, um, Sir, and, uh, as my husband uh, uh, did what we promised to do, he said, Yes. He said, but what do you know about the, the land? He said, and it was what my husband brought that we sold. And John Peter said, Sapphira, why do you choose to lie to the Holy Ghost? <laughs> why do you choose to lie to the Holy Ghost? Look at what happened. Sapphira turned around, fell down, and died. The same man carried her and went to bury her. Isn't it amazing? The Bible said fear came upon the people. Why did God allow that to happen? It was because the church needs to be respected. He wanted something that would make men know that he is God. Because church is not just one of the religion. Church is a place of hope and restoration. So he didn't want people to miss that. That when you are standing before God, you should not lie. That's what God was saying. Then he proved to the people. And fear came on them. Why didn't the brethren and the rest crucify Peter? It was the Holy Ghost that was responsible. That's to let you know, the church of Jesus Christ, a vibrant church full of the Holy Ghost, Respect that church. A church where you see people come and receive miracle. Where you see people come and draw blessing and they go home be blessed. If you are wise, respect God in that church. Are you listening to me? I'm saying this because of the because of we are growing. We have many children coming. We have leaders growing. We have members coming. We have everybody coming. But a church needs to be unknown. Where people come to draw blessing. Because church is the last hope for a man. So if you destroy it and mix it, you have frustrated God and his people. And God will not allow it. That's why he protects his church. Do you understand? Because look at it. If you can imagine that people come from different places and now to draw from God, isn't it? Because they believe this is their hope. And some are crying, coming. Some even borrow money to come. And some, they don't know what to do. They just, they, some of them enter train, they were dodging belittled men. Isn't it? Because they want to come. Did you think there is something there Beyond the man. You can kill the man. You might crucify the man. You might speak against the man. You might lie against the man. But the Holy Spirit that sees all things. That everybody comes to draw from. You can kill him. Be careful. Be careful. Let's serve God in unity with meekness and sincerity. God is taking us somewhere. We're going somewhere. And he needs you and I to ride on. And that's why I'm speaking this to you. As we come, we learn. Have fear, some respect for God. Not for the man, but for the grace and the anointing. 
Are you listening? Yeah. Yes, because I need to tell you all this. Because of tomorrow. The Bible said, in the Old Testament, Elisha, after he took the mantle from Elijah, and uh, uh, he was doing about his ministry, and one day, as he was passing, and uh, because of the, the saw he had, and the children of that village, they came out, they were clapping and laughing at him. Hey, Elisha, we saw. They were laughing at him. The man of God was touched. Because he was touched, probably, see, he, he, he was a man of God. Not a wish, not a witchcraft. Isn't it? And whatever and however how he did it, only God knows. Because he was touched, he was angry. He walked away. While he was walking, the lion came out from the bush and ate up the 40 children that were laughing and mocking Elisha. Because Elisha was a spiritual man, full of God. God cannot allow him, allow his work and his children to be mocked. He forbid it. So that's why you are a man of dignity. You carry it on. Then, let's serve God. With reverence. You hear me? With reverence. With reverence. If you serve God with reverence, you will see his wonder. You will see God move in a special way. In a, in a miraculous way. Wondrous way. A way that will make you wonder. Is this God? I have seen things in my life that God did through me or, or, and I see through people. Sometimes I sit down. I'll be asking God, is this really you? Because it's beyond my imagination. You know, there's some certain things God would do. You can't imagine it because it's too much. You, you, you try to come like this. This, is, this beats your imagination. We, we've seen things here. For us to believe that there is God here. Isn't it? Please. For the sake of the young ones coming and, uh, and, uh, and the leaders, the members, we have to keep learning and learning God well. Is he okay? God bless you. The superior man. Are you with your Bible? Good. Oh. I, I explained so much for you on, on Sunday, isn't it? I'll try uh, because I have just 40 minutes with you for this service. The next 40 minutes, be ready to catch up. Is he okay? Somebody said, mm, I, will, I, will, I will surprise you now. The book of Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Are you there? Ephesians chapter 4 from verse 23. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And be renewed. Is it what is in your Bible? Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Verse 24. 
and that ye put on the new man. Uh uh. Is it not? Am I reading somewhere else? Is it not efficient? Why are some of you talking? He said, and that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. God said, put it on. That means, wear it. Hey, tell somebody close to you, say, wear it. Put it on. Look at it, look at it. I told you, I said, the new superman, the, the, the one that is born again is the new superman. The new superman is the superior man, isn't it? That's the superior man. The superior man is the new superman. And I talked to you about the new creation, isn't it? Now, we, we want to check this right in the Bible. He said, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. The spirit, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. The spirit of your mind. Be renewed. Renewed. Transformed. In the spirit of your mind. He, God is dealing with your spirit and your mind here. It is not your body. If God can talk to your spirit, you can be saved. Amen. Now, verse 24, he says, and that you put on the new man. That means he's already there. He said, you put on. He said, that you put on the new man. Which one is the new man? The new creation. This is the new superman. He said, put it on. He said, that you put on the new man. The new man. This new man is the one that is born again. They recreated human being. The recreated man in Christ. He said, put on the new man. That means you can put it on. Hey. You can put it on. He said, put on the new man. Which God. He said, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. God created it in what? In righteousness and true holiness. The new creation, there is something about you. You are created in righteousness and true holiness. God said, put this thing on. It's like a jacket. You can put it on. You can learn it. You practice to become. That's whom you are. But now you are learning the life of a righteous, and, uh, a righteous man. Are you listening to me? He said, put it on. That which God has created. After God created it through righteousness and holiness. That means the new creation man is righteous and is holy. Amen. He is righteous and what? And he is holy. Why? Because God created you after true righteousness and holiness. Isn't it? Is that what he said? That's what he said. Now, I'm coming somewhere. God told us, when I was sharing with you last week, I told you about this life. Isn't it? This superman or this superior man. The superior man is the one that his life came out of grave. You, you were given back to anew the day you accept Jesus Christ. The day you accepted him, your new life came on you. You don't have to go back to your mother's womb and let your mother give birth to you. It is through your confession. After you have confessed Jesus Christ, Everything that he did for humanity or for mankind, immediately 
It will come alive in you. Through your word, you activate it. And those of you that were born, that are born again, you activated it when you confess that Jesus is my Lord. Are you listening to me? You confess it. Then it was activated. He did it over 2,000 years ago. But the day you confess him, that was the day it, was, it, it became functioning in your life. It became active. And now since then you have been walking in it, you didn't just know it. Now he said, put it on. It is created after righteousness and true holiness. This life. When God raised Jesus Christ from the dead, you were raised together with him in, with this newness of life. Now you are born again. You are not the person that you used, you used to be. Your body might look the same, but your spirit is you. Are you listening now? Your body still look the same. You might still think the same thing you used to think. But your mind and your body has nothing to do with your spirit. It is your spirit that is you. Did you hear what I said? And the Bible told us that the mind is a spirit that has a soul that lives in a body. So your body is a house that came the, 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 the you. So this body, that's the reason why you should not judge people by their appearance. Somebody say, ah, that man is very handsome. The other one say, ah, that man is very ugly. Ah, look at his nose. Look at his mouth. See, you don't have to judge people like that. Because houses that we, no, no, look at the houses around you. Are they all alike? No. You have some small, you have some big, and you have some large, you have some very long and tall, you have some bungalow, isn't it? It depends on the builder. Anytime you are trying to speak against person's look, you're speaking against the creator. The creator is God. He's the one that chooses to make you tall. He's the one that chooses to make you, uh, whether uh, with any, any stature you, you find yourself. Because no man can make himself. Stop judging people by their look. I wanted to marry that girl because, but the way her, her nose looked like. I wanted to, this is somebody's confession, that I wanted to marry that girl. I love, mm, but then, you know, when she's talking. Oh, um. <laughs> so because of that, you refuse to marry her. But what about her life? The spirit in her. That might just be your perfect wife. Then you not follow beauty, the one that have a pointed nose. <laughs> and tall. Maybe with a, with a, a very, very good shape. And, 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 and you say, yeah, when you, anytime she's walking, you're looking, hmm, that's my wife. <laughs> but, but, but when she gets home, she becomes a monster. <laughs> Are you listening now? A monster. You marry beauty, not the character. Then wait for the character. Are you hearing me now? You, you, you love somebody who points, who have a pointed nose. <laughs> and, and when she's walking, everybody is looking. <laughs> leke, leke, you want to fly. <laughs> That's the one you like, you love. But now we got home, she can't even cook. From time to time, until you drop, she will not allow you to go anywhere. <laughs> you must drop. What is it? Money. The day you refuse to drop, everybody around knows. Fighting here and there. Quarrel. Uh, you, you, you marry 
You marry a leke leke. Now, <laughs> because it's the one you love. Now we got home. You are asking, you are talking. Before you say one, she has said 50. <laughs> and, and somebody said, I regret marrying you. You are a liar. Marry her. <laughs> she should have even been the one that said, I regret marrying you. <laughs> are you listening now? Marry her. Because you, 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 love, you love her shape. You love her nose. When, when he's talking, say, how are you? Uh, how are you? You know, so, somebody said, he said, they know what's up. <laughs> they know what's up. They know what's up. You see, you see that guy because he's fair. And he grab with muscle. <laughs> when it's coming like this, it's coming like this. <laughs> you, <laughs> you say, you say, that's my guy. You're telling your friend, that's my guy. <laughs> That's my guy. You know? That's my guy. Okay. That's my guy. We will get home. That's my guy. We no longer have punchy bag. He turned you to punchy bag to train his muscle. That's my guy. Listen, some people, because of one reason or the other, because of the out outlook, they made terrible mistakes and errors. God told Samuel, the great prophet, you see, if, we, if I see the two prophets I respect so much in the Bible, the one I talk so much about, Elijah and Samuel. You want to know what holiness means? You... It's only somewhere I read in the Bible that has no fault as a prophet and a seer. So if you are coming up as a prophet, study those kind of men. Prophet, prophet Samuel was one of the greatest prophets. But as great, and the Bible said he was a seer. But this time he came to anoint a king in the house of Jesse. He's, this time he could not see well. He saw the vitreous, huge and tall, with a, with a big voice, who can give command. 10,000 people will run and, and respect it. And that was what he was looking at. He looked at it and said, this one is good for, for general. Come, let me anoint you. God has anointed this before... Before he said, God, I know this. God said, Samuel, stop! For I have rejected him. No. <laughs> this is how the son of Jesse walked. The one that saw, wanted to anoint. Be tall, huge, and large. He said, this one is good for an army, for general. Because they were soldiers. And, and he was already betrayed. And the Bible said, he rejected him. God didn't put that guy in the school. He never appeared to him. How did he reject this guy? Through his character to his parents. To those around him. God was watching him. He never knew that God was testing him. But the day of reckoning came, he was rejected. Somewhere, did you see very well this time? The seer could not see this one. The seer saw something wrong. Because the seer was seen based on, on the physical stature, the appearance. But God said something very striking. He says, Samuel, I rejected him. For men look at outward appearance, but I look at the inward. The inward man is the one that God created after righteousness and true holiness. That's what he looked at. He's not looking at your face. He's not looking at your height. If God were to look at height and huge, whatever, maybe, maybe I would be sitting one side. Because maybe I would be sitting one side still stretching my neck to see who is talking. Because we have some tall, tall guys here and some huge... Huge chest. 
Brother Christian, let me see. Uh -huh, you see. Hey! <laughs> so you see now. And, and, and before men, you know, if men are to choose, maybe let this anybody can be our leader, they'll look at him. He get big chest and big stomach, very tall, handsome. Let, let, let's use the hands, chairman. Isn't it? Wrong. Sit down. God bless you, sir. Amen. So, we continue to make the same mistake. And Jesus came, he repeated the same thing. He said, you judge by heart on appearance. He said, but God judge by heart. The inward man. Many made some terrible mistakes on a, Unaware. Amen. Amen. If only you know very well. Somebody, somebody said, I love that girl. I love her. I said, are you sure? He said, yes, I love her. You, you said you want to marry her? Yes, I want to marry her. Very sure? He said, yes. I said, go and pray for three months. He said, Papa, that time is too far. He said, he said, too far. I said, okay. I said, pray. I said, for that three months, even six months. I said, three months is too small. So that you can study yourselves and know if this is what I want, this one, no, is this what I want. After one month, he came back. He said, Papa, I've not been telling you. We broke up. I said, no, stay. <laughs> broke up? He said, he said, he said, no, no character at all. <laughs> you told me, you know, some people want to fool the man of God. I see what you don't see. That's why you need parental, parental guidance, which is spiritual parents. Some of us, we are not with our father, mother here now. But thank God for a vibrant church like this. Where the spirit of God is present 24 hours a day. Amen. Amen. I said, three months. He said, no. He said, three months is too much. I want to do it quick. <laughs> I was laughing. You know why? I have seen many, 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 many like this before. At the end, they will even end up blaming us. Blaming us. I said, what are you looking at? Maybe looking at the fair beauty and all this. You know, different, different ways guests work. You know, there are some that work like this. There are some that work like this. You know? There are some that work like this. You know? <laughs> all these ones are just a process. Amen. So if you want to know the real one, be patient. The reason people find themselves in trouble is because they are not patient. How can you just see a girl in the church? You just see her. You say, hmm, I love this one. I love her. Hmm, I love her. He said, now, you love me? He said, yes, go and see my papa. Papa, I love that girl. Are you sure? Yes. People like that, they are dangerous. You are a suspect. It's something that you want. You want something. You will not find it. <laughs> Sister, do you agree with me? Yeah. They will not find it. I can you just see somebody. He said, hmm. You know, I've been looking at you since two weeks now. And it is that two weeks that she came. He saw her at the first time in line. I've been looking at you for since two weeks now. I think I love you. We have something to do together. Yeah. Yeah. So easy. Two weeks. I think we have something to do together. Eh. I, 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 I. Now, they want to make it very serious. I, 
I've been thinking about it. I, I, I'm, I love you. And I, um, if you don't mind, we can just go to Papa. I, 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 I want to marry you. You are a deceiver. It's something that you want. Two ways. You want to go and introduce. You want to put me in trouble. He's looking for my trouble. You know why? He wants to see what I will say. He wants to know what I will say. Stay calm. You can even watch somebody from afar for two years. This life. We have, we have many monsters in human. Both boy and girls. So what you need to do when you are in the church, be patient because in a church like this, you have different people come. Because everybody come here because of solution. Some people that could not cope with relationship, some people that broke out, some people who devil have, have frustrated, some people who, who they have confused her, confused their character, and different people coming here for deliverance, and at the end we are trying to make everybody think like and love Jesus. Now, you can't just see somebody on that one week, two weeks, you say, I love you. Sister, be careful. Their eye, when, when they see somebody who is fair. <laughs> Some of them will form anger. They will first form anger. Some will start forming friendship. Oh, you know, your, your friendship. All your styles, boys. We know all of them. Leave the sisters alone. Let God choose for you. Are you hearing me? Because of pointed nose and features, many people have landed themselves in trouble. And it's a shame to come out, but they are bearing the torment. Marriage is joy, is en enjoyment. Enter and relax and ha be happy. Are you listening now? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. But you know, remember I told you one day, now wait, oh, I just suspend my message first. Because I want to talk to people, isn't it? <laughs> you know, the other day, <laughs> the other day I told us, I said, I said, um, I said something. I'm coming. <laughs> marriage I said something very uh, remarkable but many of you didn't know that it was true I said it was when people want to get married they say I want to settle down they are working doing everything they say waiting for that day they will settle down at the end of the day the day finally came and they said we have settled down and some, some are still walking now. They say, I want to settle down this year. I want to settle down next year. When it's just fe January, February, I will settle down. You ask somebody, what, what do you mean by settling down? The settling down is, means I want to get married. Eh? Isn't it? I want to get married. Getting married means settle down. Isn't it? That's a slant, isn't it? But it's a lie. Is a lie. All this while you have been settling down. <laughs> Until the day you got married. That's when the work starts. You, you're not settling down the day you got married. You enter work the day you got married. The day you say, yes, I agree. Whether in the corner or in the church, anywhere, both of you now come together, living and bearing children, we will say, yes, I agree. That day you have signed a spiritual and a physical contract you can't come out of. When a man signs a contract for something, is it not to work? Yes. Now, brothers and sisters, be careful. I want to settle down. What have you been doing? 
How this why you have been living alone, living with whether boyfriend or girlfriend or anyhow, you have been settling down. The resettlement is what you have been enjoying. The day you got married is work. You know why? Because you have come into life now. This is when you just you are just being introduced to life. That's why I feel sorry for those that are not married. They will say, oh, my Lord, my Lord. they just talk. Blah, blah, blah. Get married, then you know what it means. If you see a man that is married and he still, ha- he still have his hair high and you see him use tie. <laughs> Praise that man. He's a responsible man. You see them, well, ask them what they are talking <laughs> Amen. Are you listening now? When, when you get married, let me tell you something. You just enter, you just step into life. You know why? You have entered and you have decided to be a man. You have decided to be a woman. You have just signed to be a responsible person. And that's why you see some irresponsible people, they got married. After one month, they say, I, this marriage is over. Because they refuse to be responsible. And that's the truth. It's only irresponsible people because this is what I said earlier. They don't watch where. They just jump in because of beauty, fair, handsome, tall. I must get this one. Now you've got him. Stay. Stay now. Stay. Selfishness landed people in trouble. If I don't have him, nobody can have him. You're do. That's why you see some lie boys. They lie too much when it comes to guests. I must tell you the truth, boys. As you just see, they look innocent. They are not innocent. <laughs> when it comes to guests, that's when you see them paint heaven and earth. They just, you know. You know, I will do this, I will do that, I will do this, I will do that. You are this, and, and you alone. And I will, I will use the, the waters of my souls to wash your feet. I will call heaven down to back you. I will call horses to make you fly. I will turn my hands to feather to fly you. <laughs> With all the promises. <laughs> At the same time, they go to the second person, supposedly. They still say the same thing. And they tell this one, you are the only one. And they come here, they tell this one, you are the only one. Boys, what do you want? Amen. Amen. And because of this act, you see many of them jumping out of marriage. A girl you say you love. And now, you, both of you are talking, she was the first person to slap you. After marriage now, both of you are at home. You, you, you are talking, you say, you say kick away Power. And now, you are not going out to me. You will stay. You love her. So since you love them because of beauty, nose, and body, stay. Keep loving the body. So enjoy the character. So let the love overshadow. The Bible says, love cover a multitude of sin. Isn't it? Love cover a multitude of sin. Tear and slap. That slap me. I ask you not to watch where. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Amen. It is just a sweet sisters. I... <laughs> Amen. Don't worry. Today you hammer. But 
But I must say this. Boys, they are the problem sisters have. You know why? I will tell you from the Bible. A man was the one that God created. From the finished work, woman came from his body. That's the reason anything a man said to a woman, she listened. Even though they know that it's a lie, because they have a soft heart, they take it. And that's why you can deceive this girl. After She knows that you deceive her. You still pet her. You make her cry. After the petting, she say, okay. She follow but she know that. <laughs> she, she's following. She knows that you have killed her. But she's still following. You know why? You don't have any choice. Their heart is too soft. That's why you see men winding their head up and down. Winding their hair about up and down. Isn't it true? Men, they have mouth. If that sister can listen, that sister only is finished. I will give you one medicine, sisters. Don't listen. I'm not saying married women. Married women, you must listen to your husband. Amen. Are you listening now? Now, here's the point. You know that what you are doing to this girl is wrong. Eh? You still insist. You say heaven and earth that she believe. Are you happy? That's not happiness. You are deceiving yourself. When are you going to live a good life? Boys, ask yourself. When are you going to live a responsible life? Be responsible. I said, be responsible. <laughs> if it happen, you will see that the guy's problem will reduce. And they will start getting married. Not the way you suspend her in the name I will marry you. For five years now, you are still saying the same thing. But you, you, you are sleeping you, you have girlfriend in Torino, you have in Milan, you have in Bologna, you have in, in uh, Kafachan. Only you. But this one, you suspended her. I will marry you. But she put her mind there. At the end, and she don't know what to do, where to go. She's even asking you, tell me. Are you still going to marry me? And, and, and you say, don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. She's worried. Can't you see she's worried? Don't worry. Don't worry. I'm coming. Uh, yeah? Yeah. Amen. You know what? The meat you don't want to eat. Don't use mouth shades. Leave her. Leave this beautiful sister. And some say... Mm. Papa, it's because you don't know her character. If you know her character, you will not talk like this. Okay. Then tie you. Leave her. You don't get character. You don't let her go. <laughs> eh? You don't get character. Let her go now. No. Then tie you and her together. Leave her. Let her live her life. Isn't it? Uh? Is it not wonder? Papa, it's because you don't do what I'm facing. Okay, now, what are you facing? Then, maybe you can manage her, but there's somebody that can manage her. Let the manager come and manage her. Isn't it true? You can manage this one. Since you have somebody who can manage, another manager can manage her. Let the manager come and manage her. Because character of different grade. Some things you might bear, I cannot bear. That's it. 
Sometimes, it's true. Sometimes when I look at some people, I say, God, even after settling the matter and ask them to go back to live where, but sometimes I go to myself and say, Jesus, that's some men, they get patient, oh. Because for me, I don't get that kind of patient. <laughs> Isn't it? And that's why, God, I watch where God gave me what I want. Are you listening now? But people are not the same. There's some things I see people bear. And they just take it calmly for me. It's fire. I can't. I'm telling you, it's true. It's fire. I can't. That's the reason why this life is different. And that's why this one can't do this one. That one can do it. Chicken, now. There are some people they tolerate trouble. Most especially when women are talking. They will do all the things and they will just be laughing. It doesn't take them anything. I hate them all. <laughs> do you understand? But there are some any noise. Now slap you go here. <laughs> are you listening? Now? This life is different. That's the reason why when you are into a relationship and you find out that this is not what I want. Quickly, with love, I say, I don't think this can work. Oh. Don't force yourself into it. Think of where you are going tomorrow. So that you don't make mistakes like others. I mean, you want to go into a relationship and get married and come out of the marriage? You want to start having children for different men? You know how many people are suffering in marriage today? They don't know where to go. Why? I already have children. They carry the thing. You must bear it. Because you sign it. But some of you do have not signed yet. Watch. Maybe this girl is not for you. That's why you are, you are delayed and wasting her time. Then let somebody who is for come. No matter the character, she be it. He will. That is it. It's the truth. Some of them, they can't be anything. But they are so, they, 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 God just make them humble. They be it. And they are the sweetest woman or girl around. Don't you, don't you see a, 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 a woman that will not finish, even, even insult the husband, and when they get outside, the woman still loves her. It's because they are made together. If two people are hot, their house will turn to fire. That's why you have one calm one and one hot one. And if two of them are too calm, we will have money money house. <laughs> Are you listening now? We will have Munye Munye house. Everywhere will be calm, calm. They will have children and people will be, other, other children will be beating their children. Because even if they beat the answer, come, the father will say, ah, you go and find trouble. Because of that, he will become Munye. And the child become Munye. Do you understand? But there must be two. The two, one must hurt somehow. But not to the point that you now overrule uh, the other one. Isn't it? Man. Sometimes, if this one is hot, this one is hot. That house is on fire. That's why you see two relationships from some of them, you see them fighting every day. Every day. I'm not talking about some girls that say, I love when the man beats me. <laughs> you know there are some girls like that? Yes, if a man never beaten, their body not the rich. He said, he, said, he said, I love it when, when a guy beats me. I love it when a guy beats me. Come for deliverance because it's the devil. <laughs> and that's the truth. I love it when a guy beats me. If you don't beat me, my body knows the rest. Now, as you, as you now come home, you are looking for trouble. Body never really catch you well. You never see correct man that beats Slap will take stars come up for your eye. The eye will turn you like this. You fall down. You want to stand up. You fall down again until you lie down. That's why you are looking for beating. You never see man that beat you. Beating is out of the whole thing. It's not a relationship. There's no good relationship that fights. They talk. They have misunderstanding. They resolve. There is, you misunderstand to understand. 
Misunderstanding is allowed in relationship. Because that's why you people want to come into, a, into understanding, into agreement, isn't it? Because we don't think alike. That's why we agree. So in relationship, don't just come and look at the outward appearance. Do you hear me? Don't just look at the outward appearance and say, yes. Uh -huh. God doesn't look the outward appearance. He looks at the heart. It is the heart, the one inside you that he created. True, uh, uh, he created you after righteousness and true holiness. Isn't it? So you are the righteousness of God and the holiness of God. He created you. So let's do things right. Amen. How did I get here? Eh? Eh? Here? <laughs> I know some of you were very happy, but you've changed my message today. <laughs> but it's good, isn't it? You know, sometimes as a as a as a fast growing church, we hear those things. It, it helps us. And I, but when I say men are suspect, yes, you know it's small, but you also have your own part. And your, 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 your heart is too mooky. That's why they can just deceive you like that. But this time around, you must learn. And, and, and some of the mistakes some of you make. When you're in a place like this, with a, a church where you see a lot of people, but especially in Europe, what you do, you watch very well, isn't it? Before you go into a relationship, or a brother or a sister talk to you, but what you do is to contact the pastor first, isn't it? Before going into it, before even saying yes. Why? Because the man of God knows better than you in that place. You don't know if that man has come to, to, to me before with other different guests. Hmm? Mm -hmm. I'm the one that sees and knows a lot of things, isn't it? So you come and say, so, so brothers, okay, let me see the brother. Or so, so sister. Not just to jump in. Somebody just see you, say I love you, and you say I love you. It's fake. That love can last. Love? It is not easy like that. Do you hear me? So do it. Do it in the right manner. All right? You let your man of God know this is what is going on. Then he will now help you to look into the matter. Is it clear now? Are you hearing me? Yes, that is how it works. So that you can have a perfect relationship. If you come to me for a relationship and I say, yes, it's okay, that means I'm ready to take responsibility. That's the truth. If I tell you, yes, it's good, go ahead, that means, con re, con son, I'll be there. That means we must have looked into the matter. I know that these two one, these two, they can, they can, they can go together. So if there is anything, then we are ready to fix it. Isn't it? So in a church like that, like this, practice those things. Don't just make yourself available for a victim. Or don't be a victim. All right? Don't be a victim over because of relationship. You will get married. You must get married. You are beautiful from inside out. So relax. If the right man is not here, he's coming. If the right girl is not here, he's coming. Because we're, we're, we're moving with spirit. They are coming. God will use, by the wings of the spirit, we bring them. And, and there are some of you who also go out. You're a leader here. You're, maybe you, 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 you say, um, I didn't see any good girl in this place. But yet, you already have almost two, three relationship in the church. Boys, be careful. Sister, be careful. When you see a church, when you know a boy who have talked to five, six girls that you know, you still want to chuck your hair inside? You two know that the one that is telling you is also a lie? Very simple now. A brother came to Sister A, he said, I love you. And he, after that one, after one month, he came to Sister B, Sister B, I love you. He came to C, C, I love you. And maybe... Those one partially say okay. At the end, uh, you already are aware that this brother have talked to three or four sisters that you know, and now it's you. Did you think the, what happened to this one will still happen to you? Yes. 
What you need to do, you say, eh, let's go and meet father. Let's go and meet pastor. Let's go and meet papa, isn't it? Then land in my office. <laughs> and then from there we'll systemize it. What are you looking for? Don't be, a, don't be in a hurry. Are you listening to me? Brothers, you are wonderful. Sister, you are wonderful. But you know, I, I don't want brothers to see me to be a sentimental person. But you know, they know what I'm talking about. If the problem with them is resolved, the sister has no problem. Uh, isn't it true? If it is true, boy, guys, let me see your hand. Guys, let me see your hand. Guys, some of them not grill. Amen. But, but you know, I, I, I'm, I'm like the spiritual father, isn't it? But all I wanted is so that at the end of all, we can all be happy, isn't it? When somebody is doing something wrong, somebody must be there to rebuke and correct. That's what makes you a father. It's only a good father that sees and rebukes. Isn't it? Good. Now, I'm looking at us having a good house. A brother will come and a sister will come that want to get married. We'll look into it and they went ahead to get married. By next year, there should be a series of marriages here. I'm concerned about it. God is concerned about it. There should be a series of marriages in this place. But this is what you must do. Some sister, your head is like this. Look down so they can see you. You can't just put your eye like this. You're always looking far, 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 far. What are you seeing? Sit down. Look. Look like, do like this. Some sisters. <laughs> are you listening to me now? You see that my eye. I'm looking. Not like this. Just at least. Let some guys. So that you can even see very well. Uh -huh. uh -uh. Your eye can't just be like this. 24 hours. Do it like this. There are still responsible men. In this place. You know, when, when I was talking what I was saying, I'm trying to correct and make my men more serious, isn't it? But I have, the boys said they are too responsible. We have responsible and serious men. Vibrant, that is, see, any man that got married here, I see their marriage always successful. So, they are here everywhere. Yeah, so they are ready. So get, put your eye down. Say, look inward. Look inward. Like this. The next time some of you will come with a man from outside, I will say, I know not. <laughs> what did I say? I know not. I know not. You know what that means? That's King James Version English. I know not. I know not thou. <laughs> thou, thou married here. Thou not married outside. I know not. <laughs> Amen. Good. Are you just happy today? Wow. So this is it. And um, I, I want you to be happy. Hey? The superior man. Can I come back there? But I feel like just let us pray and we just close the service. And we'll just go home, go and eat rice and stew. Isn't it? But let me read one scripture. <laughs> one scripture for you. Then we'll, we'll use this one to pray. We're going to close today on time. Second Timothy chapter 2. Sisters and brothers, you already take in my time for today. But I'll read this to you, then we'll enter into prayer. We're going to do some prayer today. Are you ready? First, Second Timothy chapter 2, from verse 1.
from verse 11 to 12. It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. That means you must accept the truth. Isn't it? The truth that if it's a, it's a, it's a faithful thing for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. What is he referring to? To that scripture that said that we died with him when he was buried, we were buried with him. Now that he is alive, how many of you know that Jesus is alive? How many of you know? Jesus is alive. And he's alive forevermore. We are alive with him. Amen. He said, look at it. For if we be dead with him, is it true we're dead with him? We died with him. And now that he's alive, we are alive with him. That's the newness of life. This is the newness of life. This is the life that we have now. The life that came out from the grave. The new life in Christ Jesus. This is the superior man. As a superior man, you have a lot of advantage in this life. There's some area I wanted to take you to today, but, but somehow uh, the message swifted and, and shifted, but I'm coming back there from a Wednesday because there's some, something I need to explain to you very important that will make, that we add springs to your steps concerning this the superior man. It will add springs to your step. You start walking with springs on your step. What does that mean? And, and something, uh, uh, a new identity will be added to your personality. You, 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 you see something new be added to your life. Because this superior man, there's something about us that we have not yet discovered. Are you listening now? Now, this new life, we have it. If we be dead with him, now we live with him. If he's alive, now Jesus Christ is alive. I hope you know that Jesus is not dead. He's alive forevermore. Now we are alive with him. But he left us here. He's in heaven. He came from heaven. Now he left us here so that we can reign here on earth. Is that not what the Bible said here? He said, we shall also reign with him. Now, we are here to reign. Because in that book of, first book of uh, Peter and John, first John, chapter 4, verse 17, he said, as he is in heaven, he is reigning in heaven. Are you listening? He is a crown king. Now, as he is in heaven, so are we here on earth. That means we are reigning here on earth as one that resurrected with him. Amen. Now, where the word of a king is, there is power. There is something I'm trying to let us know. That when you speak, believe in what you say. You don't get me. As, as a new creation, the one, there is, there, there's something about you that other people don't have. The ordinary men don't have it. Are you listening to me? There is something about your life that those outside don't have. Who are those outside? Those that are not born again. The life that you have is a superior life. Because your life is superior, your word is, is superior. That means when you say something, trust what you say. Are you hearing me? If you start trusting your word, you will have you will have. You will have results like never before. Now, the difference between the one that failed and the one that did not fail is the confidence. You must build this confidence within yourself. You must know that you are a king and your word is powerful. You are a crowned king. You came with it when you came back to life from the grave with Jesus. Now, I want to show you something. How many of you were in Firenze yesterday? And not just because I am 
a bishop or I am a pastor, it is something I train myself. I exercise authority that God gave to me, isn't it? You must exercise it in everything. You remember when I was casting that one demon yesterday? I said, the ground you are standing, ground, burn her. Remember? You have seen me do it before. Some of you in deliverance service. I said, ground. I speak to, he was standing on the rug where I was standing. I said, rug, burn her leg. And she started moving and manifesting, isn't it? She fell down. I said, ground, burn her body. Her body was born, isn't it? She came to the ground, not the ground. I speak to the ground. I said, ground, for as long as she's standing here, continue to burn her. You saw the moving, isn't it? Ground, listen to me. He heard me. Does ground hear word? No, but, but because we are in church, my words are powerful. I trust what I say. I believe in what I say. Then I sit back to expect results. I wasn't expecting anything less when I said ground, born that demon. Because I knew very well the ground will respond. You know why? Where the word of a king is, there is power. It, it, when you talk about the superior man, you are superior because your words are superior. Now, what makes you a man is your word. When they say that man is an anointed man of God, he's a great man. Is it because of his look? Is it because there is something on his head that people are seeing? It's because anytime he says something, something happens. Isn't it? You must trust your word. And that's the reason why you should not say things anyhow. As a superior man, your words is very important. Then as you're speaking it forth, trust it. In the name of Jesus, believe the word. That your words is not just empty. But you are speaking with authority. As a man with authority, you are speaking. That's why when you say, I am going to Questoria tomorrow, and they will give me my document, you are not saying it doubting. You say it because you believe it. Don't start after saying, you say, oh, I don't know what might happen, though. You have missed it. Faith feed words. Now, we're talking about faith and acting beyond. See, acting... When you get to a level you get to in the spirit, you are acting in faith, but it's normal. Are you listening now? Everything we do is by faith, but you're just acting in faith normally. You're no longer exercising because you already know. It's a law. Do you come to know, come to this level when you know that what you say is a law in the spirit? We're not talking about judicial law. Now, even in the spirit, we have all those things. Isn't it? Now, you just know when I say something, it comes to pass. Now, when you are saying it, you are not shivering, you are not, you are not, you are not expecting this thing not to work. You just know it will work. That's what makes the difference. The difference between you, the new creation, the superior man, and the one outside that is not born again is your words. Or else, both of you are the same. You must trust in your word. This is my emphasis. Believe in what you say and trust in your, what you say. Your words are not ordinary. They are not empty. As a superior man, what makes you superior is because of your word. It's not because just of, just of your appearance alone, but your words. When you say something, don't doubt it. When you say something, don't, don't disbelieve it. But be careful of what you say. Because what you say, if you believe God enough and this thing that you have, it must surely come to pass. Because the life that you have, that you have inside of you, is not a human life. It's not ordinary life. It's the life of Almighty God. Anytime God speaks, whatever he speaks manifests, isn't it? So since you are like your father, anything you say is manifests. It's difficult for them to believe. But this is the truth. 
Your word is you. Isn't it? No, is it true? If you want to know a man, let him speak. You know somebody by his words. Before you're not looking at the action. But your words, your action cannot go beyond your action, your words, isn't it? Huh? It is your words that determines your action. So the proof definition of a man is through his word. Until God spoke, you never knew that he exists. It was when he said, let there be. There was, that's when you know there was God. The Bible said, in the beginning, God created. Who is this God? Until he said, let there be. And that is when you know there is God. The, the word that he spoke expressed his action. Isn't it? Now, your words is what express your action. So if you must say something, say it and mean it. That's where your result is. You know, I'm not shouting today. It's difficult for you to believe. That's where result is. What do you want? It's in your words. How do you want it? It's here. It's just for you to take it serious and add meaning, life to it. Just be serious and believe it, say it, and trust it. That's it. When God said, let there be, he didn't say, what if it's not going to happen? He said it. Whether he now take one year or six years, 20 years for the life to come, he didn't say it two times. He said it and he trusted it. And the word produced result. That's what God is. And that is what he made us to be. You want to change your life? Trust your word. You want that job? Trust your word. You want that document? Trust your word. Trust your word enough, and believe it enough, and say it. It will produce. This is the superior man. The superior man, you are superior because your words are important. Your words are powerful. And I tell you this, life is control from the spirit realm, isn't it? So if you must control things, you must speak words. Don't be quiet over things. Somebody is dying, say, I don't know what to do. Say something. They said they are going to kill you. Are you, are, you, are you ready for somebody to kill you? You say, I'm not going to die. Not crying. Oh, you yeah, heard they said they are going to kill me? Oh, oh, God, not let them kill me. No, it's wrong. Somebody says it's going to kill you. You say, I am not going to die in the name of Jesus. Believe the word. You will not die. Just like yesterday, I, I didn't tell you. The demon said, you know, I, I didn't say that part. He said, I need blood. He, he, the demon was crying, I need blood. I need blood. I said, what kind of blood do you want? Which blood? He said, I need your wife's blood. Now you heard it. Okay. You saw the action. Uh, uh, he, said, he said, I need your white blood. He, he, he said that to provoke me. And I said, okay, if it's for, it for sacrifice, I use your blood for the sacrifice. I took the demon. Now, when I told him, I said, I said, by yourself, say it. I, I, I use my blood for sacrifice. I drink my blood. He started saying, he said, he started saying it to himself. He said, not when you are anointed. He started drinking his own blood. Is that not what happened yesterday? He killed himself and started drinking his own blood. Very simple. I rejected because the demon, I said, need that, need that. He said, I don't need that for anybody. I said, for Jesus. He said, no. He ran out. I said, what's wrong? I said, no, no. I said, from where you are, knee down. He said, no. I said, if you, are not, if you do not come here now, I count from three, one to five, you'll see what will happen in your kingdom. Before I said three, he, she ran and knee down. While he was running and kneeling down, he said, I need blood. I need blood. I said, which blood? <laughs> the demon said, I need blood. He said, I need your wife's blood. I said, now drink your own blood. If I had not said anything, fear would grip people. Isn't it? 
Fear will grip everybody. But when I said the word, the word that I said came to pass. What happened to the demon? It was cast out. That tells you something. Our words are very important. Somebody say, I want to kill you. You are folding your hands to kill you. They said this December, you're not going to celebrate it at home, but in prison. You are folding your hands. You, you better tell yourself, I am not going to prison. I will not go to prison. Anybody that say I will not celebrate this Christmas at home will go to prison for me. Amen. Your words are important. Your words is you. As a superior man, exercise the use of words. Trust your word and speak it forth. God bless you. Are you a superior man? Yes. Stand up. Let's exercise it now. Let's go ahead and exercise it now. Open your mouth and begin to pray. God of heaven, my word is me. Therefore, I speak faith filled words today. The Bible says, It is God that calleth things that be not as though they were. The God that calleth things that be not as though they were. Therefore, I speak as my Father, which is in heaven. I speak forth peace over my life, I speak forth prosperity over my life. I speak forth increase over my life. I speak forth head over my life. My word is me. Therefore, I trust in my word. I am confident in the word that I speak. I speak forth health over my life. I speak forth peace over my life. I release peace in my family. Fit Peace in my business. Peace in everything that I do. I speak for peace. Peace that passes all understanding. Open your mouth now. Declare those things you want to see in your life. Yes. If you want to serve God well, you want to serve God well, speak faith feed word that you are serving God. Yes, with righteousness and true holiness. Your heart is open towards God. And you serve God with your life in meekness. Go ahead now. Go ahead now. Open your mouth and begin to speak. First of all, you must agree that your word is powerful. Then trust in it. Speak for peace. Speak for prosperity. Go ahead and speak. Before we take the next prayer point. Go ahead. From this moment, my business is a selling. I speak a sell. My business a sell. Everything I do is sir. I trust my word. I believe in my word. Therefore, I speak it forth by the power of the Holy Ghost.
I speak as a man with power, as a man with authority. Everything I desire, I have. Everything I need, I receive. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, I want you to exercise this message I just preached to you. You have to trust what you want to say now. You listen? Trust it. Three things you want God to do this week. We, we have to take authority, isn't it? Now, listen. You're going to speak as a man with authority. And now, as a superior man, we exercise dominion. See, when you speak, you are not afraid. Amen. Listen. Listen. When you speak, don't be afraid and don't doubt. I just told you the code of words. And that's why you see the reason why some words are more important. And now, when you speak, don't say, what if it's not going to happen? Don't doubt. Don't think whether it's going to work or it's not going to work. Just expect result. This is the reason why some of us do better than some. You try. See, when you, you already know you are not speaking with your own power. You are a man with authority. The superior man walking in the name of Jesus. A man who came out of grave, defeated hell, death, and grave. You are speaking which other things that have power more than you? Nothing. This is why when we face demons, face life, we speak with boldness and don't look back. Because you know, you know, you know, you know whom you are. Now we're going to speak. Now, bear me witness. Some of you walking, watching us on the internet, I want to ask you, what three things you, know, you are expecting? Whether you were expecting it next year, but we have to bring the future to now. These three things, you must know that you know it. So that when it happens, you will still remember. This week, you don't know how to exercise this. So this is how we put it to practice. Now, these three things, you must be sure. Now we're going to ask, the Bible says, Jesus said, he said, until now you do not ask anything. He said, but I ask you, ask and you shall receive. Now you must ask. Now these three things, let it be important to you. The things you need now, whether it's very important, you need it next year. But you must get the result this month. I mean, sorry, this week. When we say this month. I'm talking about this week, all right? Today is what? 29. How many days we have left? The eh? That tomorrow. This month end 30th, right? Now we are entering January on Tuesday. Sorry, December. No, listen. Like me, some like. <laughs> Do you know, I am eagerly waiting for January. You think I'm seeing this year? I finished it. I'm only waiting for the number. 
Amen. Now, December is a special month. Now, we're going to run this race into this first week of December. All right? These three things. Let it be something you know is important. I want to stand by you for these three things you are asking. If it's something you want God to do now, maybe a, 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 a something in your body, okay. If it's what you are expecting, okay. But whatever it is, let it be important. I mean something that is almost unbelievable. I want, can't you test God? Yes. You know why I'm confident when I talk about God? I have seen him. God has done so many wonders that make me sit down and think. Do you know there are some silly things that will happen that you start, be, you, I'm asking myself, are you sure? I ain't no saying, are you very, very sure? I'm asking God because I'm amazed. Are you listening now? Let's put this thing to work. Why? As a superior man, as a man with authority, whose words are so important and powerful. Now let's use, the, use it. Alright? The Bible said, trust in the Lord at all times. Now let's use it. Three things. If you like, you join your hand together. If you want to kneel down, kneel down. Just, I have just five minutes with you on this prayer. Let's go ahead and pray. Three things. Urgent. I didn't say next month. I said this week. By, two, by a Sunday, you will have a tremendous testimony. Trust in your word. Because I demonstrate what I preach. I ask you. Your word is you. Anyhow. But trust it now. Don't doubt it. Believe it. Speak it forth. Because God is here. He's here. He's here. God is here. You want to see that result. You want to see your wife carry that baby. This week. The result can change. Get out of yourself. Pray.